sort of a confident person. Oh, yes. Yes. And I'm like, that just sounds like fake it till you make it, but prettier. But right? also, I will do that now. Thank you. But also, great advice. So it's now in my Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, uh, it is really... So visualization, kind of like seeing the future, uh, I, goal setting, I guess, would be the way that I would put it. Um, I think that, so it's really funny what, I, what I'm going to say, I guess, is going to maybe sound really hokey. I don't, you'll have to tell me how it plays when I say it out loud. <laughs> Everything sounds good in your head. I went to, I was selling insurance. Um, I was managing people's money in the stock market. It was 2007 right before the world blew up the <laughs> first time in my, I don't know. There's a lot of times the world's blown up in the last 10 years um, that uh, I went to a class for the certified insurance counselor. You know, like if you want, there's like, there's like people that sell insurance and then there's people that like know insurance to the degree that they'll actually protect you. <laughs> uh <-huh>. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, it's not about like just selling you another policy. And so I wanted to be that person. If I was yeah. going to do insurance, if I was, and I actually really liked, the concept of it it saved our bacon for me and rachel so many times so i was like i'm gonna be good at this and then help other people with it because nobody understands insurance let's be honest like <laughs> people are like i need full coverage i'm like that's not that's not a thing like there's there's no insurance term that refers that's like it's just marketing. it's it's i need my everything insurance Wait, it's the marketing department at geico or or state farm like te you know what i mean it's like it's it's um it's pop insurance it's, there's not it's not like a real coverage there's no like <laughs> i got full coverage i'm like that's not a thing <laughs> what, what are your limits and they're like what i'm like you know the amount of money that you're covered for if you hit another vehicle and they're like what do you what do you mean i was like well let's do some math in california the average car is probably i don't know 45 50 grand how much property damage are you are you carrying they're like I got full coverage. Sure. It's supposed sure. to be full coverage. Yeah. Sure. But can you hit a BMW? Because that's what you're surrounded by. Your Honda is surrounded by a Mercedes, a BMW, <laughs> a Lexus, and an a Audi. Tesla. Yeah. A te yes. Yes. Like, can your policy? So, anyway, I'm going to this thing. I'm learning about insurance. And they said 90% of the largest insurance agencies in the country planned to be there. So what that told me is that the six, the success rate of you not having a plan is 10%. That you as a human being in trying to get where you want to go, your success rate of, of doing it with no plan is 10%. That is a nice way to look at that. Thank you. And then some, but there are some days where I've definitely felt or I'm like, well, I don't want to do the thing. <laughs> I would like to not do the thing, but there's still a one in 10 chance that I could get something out of it. There is. So uh, now I'm, see, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. And now I'm going to use it to also justify like, not getting out of bed until one in the afternoon. <laughs> Brad said <laughs> there's still a 10% chance this works. Yeah. Why it's not? like the scene in Dumb and Dumber. So you're there's saying there's a chance. chance. Oh, so yeah. So that's. When I when I had that light bulb moment for me, I was like, oh, so like that's that's like my big thing. When I like sit down and talk to people, I end up finding myself in like life coach situations a lot. <laughs> like, let's talk about your life. We have what we call Camp Color World, where we'll take like folks that are just having a bad life, <laughs> like just down on their luck, and like come come live at our house. We rent the mo the number one expense that people have is rent, and then the number two expense that people have is food. And so if we can help somebody who's down and out, take away ex biggest expense, number one, yeah. and biggest, then they can save money, learn job skills, get their life on track. And then, and then like one of our old uh, campers at Camp Color World is like a food service manager for a university in California. That's awesome. That's uh, so cool. Y'all, right? that is cool. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so like yeah. we try to... Uh, you know, we try to give people a fighting chance. I like for years, I said, like, if somebody will just give me a chance to show, like I could do, I can be great. So we try to be that in, in other people's lives. That um, makes me happy. You're good. You. You're good people. I, I hope so. I mean, we, we certainly put in the effort. So uh, those judgment calls are, you know, they're up to other people, but mm -hmm. we, we will certainly, we don't sleep a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hi, Esther. Esther's awesome. I'm I, well. How are you doing? 
Esther, thank you. Wait that for is, your next comment. That is awfully kind of you, Esther. <laughs> um, Oh, and Trayvon. Trayvon is such a – yesterday he was like, oh, don't you love my smile on my profile picture? I was like, I can see your cheeks say you're smiling, but I was like, give me those pearlies. Give me those pearlies, Trayvon. <laughs> so he was like, I'm going to work on – He's gonna. I if you need if you need me to send you the size of the – oh, you know what, Trayvon? You know what you should do? You should email me a picture you want, and I'll use my Fancy Nancy software. I don't know why I didn't think of this last night. I'll use my – Adobe Illustrator and I'll format your profile picture and I can send it back to you. How about that? We can do that. <laughs> what Dan sleep is for the week, right? I, I don't, um, is it? I, it's, um, my understanding <laughs> is that sometimes <laughs> people will, um, lie down and then, um, lose consciousness and, uh, vividly hallucinate for several hours. Um, and sometimes if you're very, very lucky, you wake up feeling better than, than when, when you, you lay sleep. down. Yeah. It does. And I haven't experienced that, but one day I hope to. Okay. So that was going to be my question to you is, uh, I, has the weather changed at all in Texas? Are you, you are it Texas. Started right? to cool off. Yeah. I'm in okay. Dallas. Uh, it started to cool off, um, okay. which is nice. Uh, I didn't expect it to cool off until like, I don't know, mid November. Oh, really? Uh, Ooh. So I'll take it. We've had, man, we have had um, Christmases that were 80 degrees. Whoa. And that's not ideal. And it doesn't happen very often, but it's, um, yeah, it doesn't get cold until like January. Oh, so the reason, the reason I asked, we are, we're into the forties and fifties out here in the oh, middle of, of America. And I, slept so good <laughs> because it's like putting it's like the human refrigerator right it's like because we keep our windows open with the just as much of that 40 degree coming into our bedroom as possible and then we just oh because you can do that because y'all don't have like bugs and stuff we do but if all the lights are out there's no real impetus for bug well one they'd have to make it through the fan so rip <laughs> rip, rip, rip the bug right to go through. So, not that I haven't watched the bug's life, but the reality is, if you go through the fan, what the universe You're gives gonna you. You're going to have a bad time. Um, and then, uh, it, yeah, if there's no light source, then there really is no impetus. For, like, a bug is going to be drawn to a street lamp before it will be drawn to my completely dark bedroom with a chopping blade. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, at 40 degrees, the bugs is gone. Yeah. Yeah. Because they start yeah. to hibernate. Okay. Do but I know they go dormant. Is there a man? Where's my son when I need him? I'm gonna I'm gonna Google. Will I've you? Been, I've been Googling a lot of stuff today. I'm gonna okay. Google. Do bugs hibernate? <laughs> yeah. What's the term when a bug? Because they do. So my son raises ants. Have you ever raised any insect? No, I can't. You know what? I've never decided to raise a bug before. Now that you mention it, no. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> no. I have zero bug experience in my I life. I would love to keep bees. Oh, okay. I have I, always oh. said that if all else failed and it, it seems it's and it has seemed for a little bit like it was going to for me. <laughs> <laughs> especially in the arts. I'm like, maybe it's just time to buy bees. Okay, Where do I so get bees? This was shown to me, um, Kenny. It really wasn't. It was a terrible day. But the second that Maddie came on to like her first hangout, I was like, I just felt better about my life. <laughs> so it, it's, it was a total coincidence. It had nothing to do with me. <laughs> that is so not. It's you see that smile. She can't hide that. She can't hide that. That smile is like it does things. But <laughs> yeah, if yeah. only I had window screens. We, we bought a 19, no, 18, 1890 house. Um, and so they, um, I would call you by your name, but I don't know how to, how to say Vomahananu, Vomahanu, Vomahanu. I don't know. Um, whatever your screen name is, uh, the, okay. So in, in the 1800s, they have little hooks that, um, man, this is, can okay. you stop? Can you calm down and stop just like throwing stuff? I'm trying to like. Okay, so uh, 
there's like a little piece that comes up from the top of there's and there's two of them and then you you put it on top and then it kind of swings down and then at the bottom what they have is these detachable like arms that extend out so that if the wind comes it doesn't just take your oh i got you i got you I got right you, I got and just you. take yeah, it right yeah, off yeah 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 um but there i've heard that people in iowa and like historic like i've my neighbor's like oh it's time to put your screens out like when we are here in the summer and i was like i i don't think i have those i just bought the house i'm not sure <laughs> how, to, how to get my screen are they in the basement is it does it come do with I the have house? to buy a screen like I don't, I, how do you how do you repel bugs do bug pokemon count i first though yeah bug pokemon are the best type. dude okay the favorite it's heracross heracross right. kicks butt um because he's i log in fighting no, I have no beef with with Heracross. The best bug type Pokemon is the Mega Beedrill, and I will fight anybody who says otherwise. Boy, I did. I played. I played competitively for a little bit. Um, and this is a dorky thing about me is I um I was in a Tumblr Pokemon League for a half second, and I created a. Uh, I got really really deep in the game. Um, I created my, my bug type gym based around my, my amazing uh, Mega B drill. And I like, I did like the whole IV breeding thing. And yeah. Like, God, anybody who watches this who is not like super into the Pokemon metagame is going to be like, what is wrong? What is she talking about? But yeah, I, uh, I got really deep into it. <laughs> okay. Do you hang with Marissa Lenti? We don't hang out a whole lot, but I love her. You should totally play Pokemon against her because she was like, she thought don't I was cool <laughs> just long enough for, um, until I was like Pokemon go. And she's like, wait, you don't play main series. Oh, dang it. Why are we talking about this? <laughs> I take, I take Pokemon go as serious as I can. I can take it. Uh, in fact, do you, you were the first one to catch a shiny when we did our Hensky event. Yeah, because I'm unprofessional and I sat here while everybody else was talking and played Pokemon Go. Do and you now know? I'm opening Pokemon Go. Yeah, I would literally just grab my I'm like, why are now that I'm talking about it, why are we not? Um <laughs> I I caught what did I catch? It was during was it FNAF? Because I remember Kellen was on screen. You know there's a backwards hat the Crow Gunk has it's like it's a G boy crow gunk now. Have you seen that? Wait, what? Yeah, look, he's like G'd Why up. Why did you give him a hat? He's got a backwards hat. Well, because I'm tired of Pikachu with a hat. <laughs> I don't think yeah, I need. Pikachu gets all the costumes and all the hats. And I stuff. definitely don't need my 40 second different Pikachu with a hat. No, um, I don't. And now they got a, a million uh, hat Pikachu in freak. Oh God, my Pokemon storage is full. <laughs> Story of my uh, life. Okay, what are you at? True, 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 um, I don't know. True confessions of the nerd kind. <laughs> what are you at storage-wise? Uh, 1,050 Pokemon. Okay. And get, ready to, get ready to judge. I have so, okay, I started doing this thing where if I, if I make a microtransaction in a game, uh -huh. And mostly, when I say a game, mostly I mean Pokemon Go, but also lately Among Us, because instead of just paying the $5 for the game and getting uh -huh. all the stuff, I was like, I like this game and I will support them by buying one DLC thing at a time. So I've spent like probably 20 bucks on Among Us. But every time I make a microtransaction, I will transfer that same amount into savings. And um, I've embarrassed myself that way. Oh Only yeah, because nobody else can see. You know, nobody can nobody see. Can see just... my... <laughs> but um, it I spend too much real people money on on uh, on Pokemon Go. So um, would you believe I'm a free to play level forty? I'm a free to play almost two times level forty. And that makes you an insane man. Okay, so there's that. Is that is that a, is that what you needed to know? I mean, I, if I asked the question, it was definitely uh, it's definitely <laughs> there. Um, so tonight, everybody, um, we had we had a schedule, but then as life as life does it, um, it throws you a curveball. Don uh, was obviously present prevented presented with one of kind of the worst curveballs that you can get, and so tonight um, we are. She's obviously not with us, uh, which is a super bummer. 
Um, I think the, the thumbnail may still show Dawn, uh, but we, me and Maddie talked about it and agreed to take questions and just to do this panel as our panel for the night and to take questions and to kind of like pay homage to, uh, to Dawn and her family. And so uh, and give her feel, the space that she needs. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, totally. you follow, if you follow Dawn on Twitter, she, um, her, her grandmother passed away recently. Yep. Um, so she is, she is taking some time. Please, yep. uh, if you don't already, one, go follow her on Twitter. Yes. And two, she yes. has retweeted a whole lot of really wonderful uh, quotes and videos, photos and videos of, her, of yep. her beautiful grandmother. Yeah. Um, go like those. It's, it's, it's all adorable and very, yeah. very sweet. The one and with her like dancing at the table. Is she's, like, she's an adorable yeah. woman. Um, yeah. Go, go give Dawn some love. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's, uh, so we're, we're taking questions. So chat, usually this is like where we just, just do whatever and have a good time. But tonight we definitely want to do something different and something special to kind of sh show it like, you know what I mean? Be there for her in spirit and kind of share in the camaraderie that she is reliving on her Twitter feed to kind of share with people about how fun and like what a big part of her life her grandmother was. So, uh, so yes, please feel free at any time, uh, throw those questions our way. We will be talking all, uh, until we're, we're done with the panel tonight. So yes, bring one, bring all. And, I, and we appreciate you guys showing up. Definitely. Uh, if you get a chance to stop by, her Twitter feed and say something kind and let her know that you're thinking of her. Um, we very, very much uh, are, she is in our, in our minds and in our thoughts right now, it's already a difficult time for a ton of people. So you can imagine like adding that like personal thing to. Uh, Don, Don Bennett is one of the sweetest, genuinely kindest human yeah. beings I've ever had yep. the pleasure to, to meet. And um, yeah. Yeah. I was, Grateful in January, um, we did Sack Anime was one of the things that happened before the world ended. Um, and it was where I met Hayden and Dawn and uh, Brittany is a good friend of mine. So we, uh, we were talking about dinner plans and as happens, I think Dawn's uh, table was right next to Brittany's. And so we're just like, just come on. And then, you know, then Brianna was there. Like, will you just come what on? A and good group of ladies. Yeah. Yeah. Brianna Knickerbocker, Don Bennett, um, Hayden Davio, Brittany Karbowski, and then Steve. Um, do you, Steven with the red hair? Um, I bet if I search fast enough, I can find out what his last <laughs> name Have you Have you done California conventions? I have not. I'm not. Oh. Uh, Let's see. I'm trying I've to I've done one in-person event. I have really? done more I have done more events in the quarantines. Have you really? Than I did previously. Yeah. Are you just the best kept secret in anime? Is that what's happening? Apparently. <laughs> well, we should we should let, <laughs> just let that out when uh, when this is over. Gosh, is it Steven? Nope. Ah, oh, I know so many Steves and Stevens. There is a gentleman with red hair, and I feel like he he works with a, a number of different conventions, um, and he ends up being a lot of people's handler, um, and he came out with us as well. I cannot, Steve, you don't have to forgive me that you are one of many people named Steve or Steven on my <laughs> Facebook. So, um, yeah, it was really cool. We went out, and I pride myself on the cuisine, and so we I try to push the envelope a little bit. Um, and we went to just some really magical places in Sacramento and had an absolutely beautiful time. I was very grateful for a chance to, uh, get to, get to know Hayden and Dawn and Brianna and all of which almost, um, this, this Dawn was going to be the last one that had not been on from, from the SAC anime crew. So, uh, all right. So in the spirit, the questions are starting to come in. Let's get, oh man. Yeah. That there might've been a little bit of that. I mean, yeah. Maddie called me some names that were slightly <laughs> mean about my level of play in Pokemon Go. I, while we were sitting here, uh, a friend of oh. mine. Um, what did uh, you do? Has... What did you delete to create space? Uh, nothing. I didn't. What? Okay. Cause, no, right. because I'm I'm focused now. Uh, but while we were sitting here, I got a text from a, a friend of mine who um, <clears throat> is 
way more into Pokemon Go than than either one of us, um, and has will text me like a couple of times a day yeah. and say, "Hey, yeah. I'm doing. Do you want to do this raid? Because you can now invite people to do raids remotely, I which I, I love because yeah. I don't leave my house anymore." Um, but he, uh, yeah, he texted me while we were sitting here talking about Pokemon Go and said, "Hey, do you want to do a Curlia raid?" And I'm like. Yeah, I shouldn't. You should. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a thing. So. But it's tapping. This it's is tapping. I love it your is. focus. I love your focus. But it is <laughs> like I'm not going to hold it against you. Oh, and you know what occurred to me? Krogunk can be shiny, which means that you can now get a G'd up shiny Krogunk. Do you have one? Do you have a shiny Krogunk? I do in um, in Sword and Shield, but not in Go. Okay, it's such a beautiful color. All right. Next, second favorite type after bug. Oh, wow. That was a tough I don't one. know. I don't need a second favorite. Really? Do you only <laughs> run bug type teams? No, I don't only run. I would love okay. to run only bug type teams, but I would need to, I would need to do it in probably like, yes, okay. probably an X and Y, but, um, uh, psychic maybe. Really? Or, fa or fairy. Probably okay. fairy, because I really like Mawile. Really? I really like Mawile. I have had such trouble be having Mawile be useful in Pokemon Go that, like, I am... Oh, in Pokemon Go, it's garbage. Totally garbage. <laughs> um, so, like, and I'm a utility player, so, like, I can't stand Pikachu. I can't stand Ra Raichu. Like, mm -hmm. I can't do anything with those Pokemon. Reiko, on the other hand, that big old saber-toothed tiger. Hell Yeah. That's an electric type. And I think that's the I think that's the only one of that particular trio that's any good in Pokemon Go, because I don't think Entei is very good in Go, and Suicune no. is garbage in Pokemon Go. Is it really? sucks, because I have 100% perfect stat Suicune in Pokemon Go that I'm like, you're still, I love you, but you're still useless to me. Uh, I can't do anything with you. What What are your, what are your prize hundos? My pro oh, let, oh, well, let me pull them up. Yeah, I have a uh, I have a Nidorino that I have been that's been my buddy for a very long time. I really like Nidorino. Really, uh, I, like just, very recently, I just okay. Like in the last several months, I've been like, you know who I like? Hi, Bobby. I was just talking about you. <laughs> oh, is that the friend that was texting you? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Bobby, I would have take I would have accepted your request, man. I would have I wouldn't leave you like that. Although I think I'm out of remote raid passes right now. Um, I bought some more. Um, and Kyle, you're totally right. That's exactly the Steven I was trying to think. See, that's how that's how well known he is in the industry that everybody knows who Steven Goodby is. I mean, I did, couldn't remember his last name, but that's because okay. I have okay. Here All right. are my here are my hundreds. Okay, hold on. You gotta have you many. have to like tilt it so that well, it's oh, not. Shoot. Just just tilt they it a little bit so there's no screen glare and show me your Okay. Okay. So on yours I see Snorlax. Oh Yan Mega. Oh man. Don Fan is oh you too? I have a I have a Hundo Honchcrow. Sharpfish. Okay. Sweet Coon. Oh, you have a Hitmon uh Lee? No. Hitmon Chan. Chan. Um, uh my hit my hundred percent um hitmon chan's name is One Punch Man. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, my, really I have two. I have two one hundred percent hitmon tops, and they're really? both named. They're both named Beyblade. Oh man, <laughs> um, you are such a savage. So I, I my one hundred percent IB Gyarados is a lucky. My one hundred percent IB Mewtwo is a lucky. I have a second hundred percent IV Mewtwo. That's the defensive, the armored Mewtwo. And then I, don't, I never got the armored Mewtwo. I'm so jelly. I only did one raid. It was a perfect, and that was the end. Man, I have an execute whose name is One Hundred. Oh, that's oh man, that's you know you need to be in like a merch department. Like that is some <laughs> really clever uh, doings right here. Okay. I uh, I'm not I'm not normally one to name my Pokemon. That's good to know. Thanks, I know, Bobby. right? I so I was like, that's useful information. That's going up there. Okay, here we go, Jane. What is your favorite thing about uh, Kaguya Ka Kaguya-sama? Uh, Miko has zero chill. I love voicing girls with zero chill. Um, so she's I, just I, full go, one hundred percent all the time. All the time, like she she gets introduced in episode four, and she's very like. 
I'm very serious and I am going to be the student council president. And I was about to say a swear word. I don't know if I can <laughs> swear on this stream. Um, this one's public. Uh, I don't know. Does what is what are the rules for YouTube? Oh, Do they can have I, I want to drop a a, a a a dirty word. Um oh. but no, she she shows up and she gets introduced and she's very she's very serious and very tight-laced and hmm. Um, and almost immediately, um, she loses all of that and starts uh, shrieking most of the time, which I love. Um, I, I had a session um, for this show just a, a couple of days ago where I did something. I did a take of something and immediately apologized to my director. And I said, I don't know why I just made her such a gremlin. And she goes, no, 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 no. Girl, Keep it. That's in the <laughs> script. Okay. Yeah. Um, I uh, yeah. I love I love uh, screaming gremlin children, and uh, Miko okay. has become one. Uh, Raccoon in in Kimono Friends was Kimono one. Friends. Um, uh, goodness. Um, oh, I can't remember my own characters' names. Uh, what? What do you need me to look up? My character in Michi Joe. Anybody? Quick. Okay. Um, well, chat. Yeah, <laughs> chat will probably bail us out. On uh, well, oh. while chat looks for that, Lisa, um, Lisa I, I found this for you. You can start this on Monday. <gasps> yes, yes, this came up in a panel the other day for Kimono Friends. Um, and there's like a whole beekeepingclub.com, and there is this, there's like a standard format on how to keep bees inside your house. And then there's like a little window thing right there um, that the door is like slightly propped and then they go in and they go out and they build their honeycomb right there. Um, oh, it was Dawn. Uh, no, um, Hayden Davio, uh, who was talking about, she does tinctures with the, oh man, anyone that was there. There's a part of, a, a hard part of the honeycomb that bees use to build up the walls to give the honeycomb its structure. Mm -hmm. And then when they're done with it and the, the honey's been like harvested, then that the hard part of it is actually used kind of like medicinally or holistically. Um, and so uh, Hayden puts those in tinctures. We, we That's learned awesome. Yeah, I was, it was awesome. We learned so much stuff. Um, it's time to buy bees. Yeah. Yeah. So oh. that, that could happen on Monday. Um, my life's about to change. It is, <laughs> Jeff. I appreciate you being willing to step into the arena with me. Um, I, I do like battling in Pokemon Go. I will never turn down if that if that pops up, man. I never, I never turn down a, a request to, uh, to PvP. All right, yes, two Hundo Mewtwo's, one of which is lucky. Uh, one of them is two psychic type moves. I don't know what the defensive one has because I've never used it. <laughs> um, but Mewtwo is the only, so that's why when you were like, Oh, psychic is my second favorite type. I was like, but I, what is it? What is it super effective against? What is super, what is psychic? Uh, psychic is super effective against. Oh goodness. Oh goodness. All right. Let's pull up the poison. Type. But who runs poison? I guess like, it seems like such God, a thing. Don't touch my bee drill. Is is it poison bug? Is that the bee drill? Uh, yes. Type effectiveness um, chart. I, right. There was a there was a time where I would have known this immediately. I think it's just poison and fighting. All right. Here's my. This what psychic is, is good against. I'm going to reveal my favorite um, chart for type effectiveness. How do I open this up? Can I get this bigger? At games meta. Wow. What is this? I've never seen this one. Oh, it's my favorite chart. There it is. Chat says fighting. Yeah, poison and fighting are the only two. That are, that it's super effective against fighting? Yeah. Okay, then psychic is super helpful because... Brain fight, over brawn! Fighting types are very important in, at least in Go, there's so many normal types with giant CPs that if you don't bring your team of like Heracross or Machamp, or what is another good fighting type? Uh, my Hariyama is is Ooh. really powered up. Yes, he's a big boy. He is a big boy. I like my big boy. Yeah, so I love this because it's so it's like just super easy to figure out what what does 
you know, super effective against, and then what does like nothing like uh, half damage from, right? Those are all the things you're in. The, I guess that makes sense why it's green on the top and red on the bottom. But if anyone's never seen this chart before, I'll drop this in. That was really cool and handy. I like it that. It is very, it's my favorite. Oh, you know what? It didn't even, okay, hold on. It didn't even show. I like clicked on it. And now like I'm the only one that's looking at this, this window. <laughs> Here we go. There's We're good the chart. At technology here. I know, right? So I'll drop a link to this. How? Right? How it's like very, you know what I mean? Like it, it doesn't take a lot of time to read. So a lot of times I will jump into this chart in in the raid lobby and try to figure out like <laughs> if I got 90 seconds to figure out what I should be using. But right. I mean, hey, if you're um if your Pokemon has different um, attacks from the type that they're different type attacks from the type that they are, then it will automatically populate your your raid team with those and go. It, it will. It will. Sometimes the auto suggest is helpful, and then sometimes, like, if I get another team of Agron's auto suggested. Okay, Agron is actually is not good in, no, in go. No, no, it's terrible. It's upsettingly squishy. It's very well, it's very tanky, but it doesn't it's DPS. It doesn't do anything. Yes, you're gonna be there for the whole you're gonna run out of time. That is not yeah, so it's it's a bummer. I, I get a little sad inside. I almost I like to faint my not favorite Pokemon and then they won't be suggested because they're in the Aww. in the hospital. What For shame. It? Yeah, it is, but I don't know what to do. Like I just I can't uh okay, what's you had to I, think we're talking about, I think we were talking about Miko. Oh, yes. 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 Okay. No chill at all. Ooh, too much chill. Oh, <laughs> this one is, this one, this character is the exact opposite? Yes. Uh, Inca is um, worst girl. Uh, oh. If you guys are keeping up with Fire Force season two, um, I... For, it's about to. It's, they're about to start running season two on Toonami, so I'm not going to okay, but is, spoil is she, anything about season two um, for for Toonami watchers. But is she um, one of the um, white clads? Uh, she she is the fifth pillar. Oh yes, um, yes. So okay. she uh, she she pops up, and uh, for a few episodes, uh, the Fire Force and the White Clad are are right. fighting, over, fighting her. over her. Yep. Yes. Um, well, you have to be excited about that, right? Because that's a that seems like a pretty big role. Because we know Shinra's the fourth, right? And he's huge. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, she, uh, I know that she she disappears for a little bit. She's got her little introductory art mm -hmm. uh, arc, mm -hmm. and she she takes off for a while. Um, she will be back. Um, as anyone who has seen the second opening for Fire Force can attest, uh, she will come back by the end of the season. Um, goodness gracious, I love her. Uh, and it's, I have always, man, I don't want to spoil anything for Toonami Watchers. Okay. I have always wanted to play more characters like this. Really? And I have been so anxious about how she was going to be received. And the response has been overwhelmingly positive, and I'm oh, good. unbelievably grateful for that. Um, that but awesome. she's she's so outside my my norm uh, as as an actor in in this particular industry, and so it's um, I I love getting to to play in her in her brain. Oh, that is awesome! Uh, although one of my favorite things you do, let's put it up there with Jeff. Boom! How heavy are those dumbbells you lift? <laughs> I heart that anime so hard. I do too. Uh, I I googled. I got like sad and in my own like stuck in my own brain a few nights ago, and I googled to see if there was any news that I somehow hadn't heard about a season two for dumbbells. And there may there may never be. I don't know, but I would like it. I um, would love it. It's such a a wholesome show. It's so it's wonderful. Um, yeah. And when it when it got announced, I think I told about thirty people that I wanted to be in this show. Really? And yeah, I was just like, I, I, I want to, I want to be part of this. I don't care how. Or yes. what. And just like looking at the art and I'm like, I haven't heard any of these voices yet, but I feel just by looking like I don't, I don't fit in this, in this palette. No. And so I expressed to a few people like, oh, I really, I would really be interested in this. And I think I, I emailed um, Tara, who is a superhero and does all of our talent yeah. coordination. Um, and I said, I am interested in being part of this. I don't like, I don't know if there are oh. going to be auditions or anything, but this is, and I never do that. 
Um, but you, so said, how did you find it? How did, cause it seems like you really liked it. How did you I, find it? I tend to keep up kind of with, um, with upcoming anime for yes. like the next season. Okay. Um, so if something gets announced that everybody like Twitter will, will light up about one thing okay. in particular. Okay. I'm like, Oh, let's, let's see what this is. Uh, like when the first couple of episodes of millionaire detective, um, came out in, in like March before it got delayed, Twitter was alight with millionaire detective. And I'm like, really? what is this? Hmm. Okay. And I, um, I, I finally started watching it and fell in love with it. And I'm like, yes, you know, okay. Twitter has good taste. And so I, people started like rumbling about dumbbells and I looked it up and I kind of read about it and I'm like, I want this. I want to be a part of this. This sounds like so much fun. And I reached out and I said, I would be interested in being considered for this. If there are auditions, I don't know. Wait, but like, yeah. I'm like, I would be, and when I, and when I say that, when I reach out and say, I'm interested in this thing, yeah. that means like, you can give me a bit in episode three that never yeah. comes back and Just I'll be happy. Please, to yeah, be please let involved. me do dumbbells. Yeah. Um, and apparently nobody told that to Jade, who was directing. Um, Jade was the director, uh, Morgan Lore was the um was the assistant director on that show. Mm -hmm. And according to Morgan, she and Jade sat down to cast and they like wrote out uh, note cards with like three actors per character that they were going to then compare and discuss. Really? And um, she said, okay, like I'll be, we're going to start with Hibiki. Okay, three, two, one, flip. And they both had my name down and they what? went, well, that's going to be Maddie then. No way. Which I was just so pleased to hear. That's um, and awesome. She, she didn't tell me this until we were recording like episode yeah, yeah, yeah. 10. Yeah. Um, but uh but yeah, uh, and you know, the directors will hold, you know, like casting meetings kind of like, or they used to, I assume they still do over, you know. Sure, so digitally, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it would be like, oh, hey, oh, well, I want to do so-and-so, but like they're out of town for like three weeks or whatever, kind of a, yeah. or like, oh, hey, I just worked with this actor for the first time. I really liked them, like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. And so apparently at this at this meeting, Jade goes, I'm thinking about using Maddie Morris for my lead in Dumbbells. And like three or four people in the room went, oh, God, she's so she desperately wants to be in that show. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. And like, have you not seen her Twitter? She's oh, that's awesome. And I and, and I, I try not to do that kind of thing on Twitter, especially because that's sure, sure. that's I don't know. That yeah, feels it is that feels like a weird pressure thing. It is. It is. Um, But uh, yeah, I, I, I told friends and. um. Man, that's uh, awesome. Yeah. I, so I, I really lucked into it, and she wound up being one of my favorite characters to play. Yes, 100%. Especially because, for the most part, she just sounds like me. Yeah. She's like a little bit goofier. <laughs> so much. I, I feel like I could like I could see you. Like, they could just replace that uh, image of, of her with you and go through the anime. And I was like, I would totally buy that. Like that would, it seems like if I had to ask you what your relationship is with working out, like this is, I would just be getting, you know what I mean? I don't know. You and tell it, that came, that show came down, um, at a time where I was really starting to make this, you know, yeah. these kind of changes in my life. And I just started working with a personal trainer. Yeah. Um, it's just like, Oh man. So Did he yeah, look like it, Steven Foo's, uh, <laughs> no, uh, it, you know what? My 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 old personal trainer looked exactly like Stephen Fu. If Stephen Fu was a very slim blonde white girl, <laughs> so if, but you, otherwise, if, if Stephen Fu looked like Brianna Knickerbocker, then it would be <laughs> yeah, yeah, then exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's um, funny. But you yeah, well, you how, think yeah. that's what that what he looks like. Like he has that jumpsuit on, and that's in your head. That's what you think he looks like, right? And yeah. this and off, you're like, wait, how is that the same? And that that just is that just is Stephen Fu in real life. That is he, is, I heard ripped. that. He, he could, that's what I heard. Stephen could break me in half. Like yeah. he could snap me like a twig. He is <laughs> frighteningly ripped. That's um, awesome. Did you I, ever? Did you see him at all during the recording of? Of dumbbells, I ran into him every now and then. Like okay. one of us would have a session right after the mm -hmm. other. Yep. Um, but uh, and I didn't. I, I I don't think I don't think I'd met him. You know, more than in passing before we started that show. Um, 
but no, I love him. He couldn't possibly be nicer. Like that's so great. He's such a cool dude. I yeah. just he's so chill. That's I love his whole cool. vibe. I I have as as soon as I watched that anime, I was like, uh, that's he's on my list of people to find in America. Um, <laughs> and and honestly, it's one of my the animes that I want to license. I just want to support the show. I I like um I like anime that's very true to life, and I feel like yeah. Yamana's first time is a very real portrayal of what high school is like for people, and the mm -hmm. awkwardness, and the like. People are just they're trying so hard, but they're like trying hard at the wrong goals. Like Yamana said, I you know I'm gonna bang a hundred guys, but she spends all <laughs> of her time going after one guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, it's just this whole like argument where you tell yourself you're one thing but then you're not that th you know what i mean but then mm -hmm. the universe saves you from yourself <laughs> and you end up like d yeah so to me dumbbells felt like um it felt like very like what it's like to try to change who you are and the habits yeah. that you have um i love leah's character the teacher and i love my okay so my favorite freaking thing about dumbbells is that it could have so easily fallen into this and and this this happens a little bit in the very first episode where um hibiki's friend ayaka tells her like mm, you're never gonna get a, get a boyfriend if you're fat yeah and it could have so easily fallen into this like body shaming right. you know yep. change yourself yep. for men yep. kind of a thing yeah and it was like that her her high school friend kind of like needling her mm -hmm was the impetus for the rest of the show but that's it and they would pick on each other but it was in this this friendly like yes. wholesome way where they're yeah. they're all working together and encouraging yes. each other yep. you know towards the same goals and then when um when miss tachibana gets introduced it's oh she's secretly a cosplayer she's a super yes. famous cosplayer yeah and nobody can know but and, but they don't portray that in any kind of like shameful no, way. It's like no, no she keeps it a secret because right. she's a high school teacher. Right. But it's they absolutely respect her her hobby and this thing that she loves yeah. and is passionate about. Yeah. And it's so genuinely wholesome yeah. and 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 kind to all of these girls in this show, which I just really really love. Yeah. I I to me it's like well what if we just get beyond it. Right. There's the initial reaction. Like, for instance, you'll never get a boyfriend if you, okay. Sure. Yeah. Right. But then that's it for the rest of their relationship it has nothing to do. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Not and the rest of what Hibiki wants for, you know, the remainder of that show is all what she, it's, it's, I want to do this. And right. I want to learn about this. I, yes. Yeah. yeah. And she's, and she's constantly asking questions and learning how to do things yep. better and surprising yes. herself at, you yep. know, and finding her talents. And yes, it's, God, yeah, oh, man, y'all, if y'all haven't seen Dumbbells, go watch Dumbbells. Please do. Please, oh. please do. Okay. Being part of my hero, Academia. It's very cool. <laughs> um, I, uh, I said this to somebody not too long ago, um, that everybody wants, you know, everybody wants a major part in the big, you know, AAA series. Um, but it was really nice to one get called in um and i play i play two characters technically in my hero mm -hmm. um i play Dakota, who's in um in in uh, class b uh who doesn't speak <laughs> so i have done like a handful of very small reactions but like she's there and and if she if she does ever open her mouth she's me um and she's a cool character in canon. So like, even if my voice doesn't come out of her mouth, she's still a cool character that I get to like, you know, have some attachment to. Um, and I play um, Miss Ikoma mm -hmm. in the most recent um, season for a couple, just a couple of episodes. And so it was, it's cool. It's always cool to get like the, hey, like I said, you know, about dumbbells, like I want to be a part of this. I don't care. I don't care how big, I don't care what. So it was cool to, you know, get called in and, and to, to be a part of this universe and a part of this, you know, really cool family. Um, and to play a character in Ikoma's case that I felt like I was so perfectly suited for. Oh, good. Um, like, it, Colleen is unbelievable. Uh, she's, she's, yep. she's incredible. Yeah. And <clears throat> she, she put me in this place that I don't, she, she gave me this character that I is a type of character that I don't, 
play overly much. Um, and where my voice sat and where my deliveries came out, I left that session feeling so good about myself, just knowing that she's she may only be in two episodes, but that is exactly who I needed to be. That's very cool. And it felt good to to you know fit into that puzzle yep. in that way. Yeah, I I man Wednesday, I called Colleen on Wednesday and I was like, t I just I woke up one morning and I was like, David Wald is Morpheus and Colleen Clinkenbeard is the Oracle in my life. <laughs> like that's that's where I'm living right now. And so I I had to talk to both of them and like, it's just it was a hard week. Um, mm -hmm. and and what was really cool is she actually like jumped onto my Facebook feed and like pitched in like. You know what I mean? She's like, yeah. almost like, I know that if I get on the phone with you, Brad, this is going to be like more time that either of us have, but I hear you. And so let me, you know, it was yeah. like, it's like, I'm yeah. going to reach out and say, Hey, I was really, hey. yeah, that was really cool. Um, so yeah, she, uh, I've heard that from a lot of people that she has asked them to, to, to do something that she knew was in there and that you learn once she pulls it out of you. Yeah. 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 She's a fantastic director. She is. And then Trayvon, we covered this, I think, out of order. Uh, uh, on... Yes to both. <laughs> <laughs> yes, crazy. Yes, scary. Uh, and then you hinted at this, too, that in Kimono Friend. We're, we're talking about uh, Raccoon is a is a, a trashy garbage baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> raccoons get such a bad rap. <laughs> um, raccoons are good. They're clean. They wash their hands. They, they do wash their food. Like, Boy, if we all did they, that. Yeah, they, they eat garbage, but I mean, so do I. You know what I've eaten? I've eaten a, a cup of yogurt and a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch today. No, I had I had real dinner. Um, but up until like 5 p.m., my day was cinnamon toast crunch and, and a yogurt cup. So I, I too eat like garbage. I, do you, do I you am, add? I am a I'm a raccoon. <laughs> this is true. Uh, <laughs> do, do you put anything in your yogurt? Are you a, an add to yogurt person? Uh, sometimes. Okay. Um, mostly I just get like the little Chobani cups. Yep. Have the fruit on the bottom. Yeah. Sometimes yep. I'll get the ones like the, with the little flip over thing. It's got like granola bits oh, or whatever in them. Yeah. Those are, those feel very school lunch to me. Yeah. 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 Man, uh, Brittany was, Brittany Lotta was picking on Kellen. Uh oh! Uh, the other day That's about nice. about loving about loving Lunchables. Oh really? We were, having, we were having a chat the other day, and she was picking on Kellen about how much he loves Lunchables. And I'm like, that is a shame. I like Lunchables. Do you? Yeah. But it. <laughs> I don't. I think if you flipped it over on the back and you read the ingredients, I don't. I don't it's think like, it's just it just says nothing in nature. Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so you okay. You're, you're not blind. To it. You're not blind. Okay. Yeah. Hey. I don't assume a Lunchable is health food. Okay. <laughs> It's good to know where we're at. As long as yeah. I feel like that's, I feel like that's where we're we're missing in America. It's not like we all want each other to be the like perfect upstanding citizen. Like what we're asking is that we know that that the back says that it's not real food. That's what we're asking each other. I I don't yeah, know. Yeah, just that's the, just the honesty and the yeah. openness. And yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's like I don't because um, there was a really great quote. Man, what was it? it was 2016. There's a there's a, a an older German dude that's part of the leadership of of my church, um, and he was one of the first non-American people put in leadership in a really long time in our church, and it was really cool. I know a lot of us woke people were like, "Can we just can we start with someone with an accent? Like, give us if we can't have somebody that's not white, can we have someone with an accent?" <laughs> it, right? And then so here's this this white European guy with a heavy German accent. Um, and he, he was like, look, everybody can't look like me. If they all look like me, like ha this world would suffer so much for, for the lack in that yeah. we need you pierced ear, pierced nose. We need you tattooed person. We need you shaved head person. We need, and like, he just, just kept naming all these different folks that didn't look like him. And he's like, we, we need you that the, the beauty in the human experience is that we're not all the same. And it was like, just a, such a cool I needed that at that time. Yeah. Um, I look like this intentionally because uh, I'm the only Mormon I've ever met that looks like this. And so I want, you know, Rachel had a mohawk forever. And now she, my daughter um, weaved 
dreads in installed. I don't know. What's the proper term when you, she had dreads installed. My daughter installed dreads on Rachel's mohawk. And now she is a woman with dreads. And, and our whole goal has been to make people that like, I can't change the fact that my pigmentation is this, but we can at least say like, it's okay that you don't look like, and I'm yeah, not, like, I'm this, not, you know, yeah, little gingerbread not, man, cookie cutter thing. Yes. No, and yeah. I'm not getting on them for being a, a gingerbread cook. Like, you know, there's a right. lot. Of, we need everything. Yes. Yes. It's nice to have yes. everything. Everything. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, thank you, David Wald. And thank you, Colleen Klingenbeard. And thank you. Every, Emily Neves is another person who's had to I help hold so my much. hand. <laughs> <laughs> so we can tell me it's going to be okay. Oh man. Uh, yes. Oh man. Yes. So we're all going to agree with you, Kyle, that the, the cast of, of dumbbells is like Leah is that teacher is so, so spectacular. She's hysterical. Uh, Leah talks so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you like to do the exercises? Uh, did I like to? No. Did I? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Um, That's how I found the anime. My daughter was doing the exercises at the end of each episode and like I, got really super excited about it. I could not do a push up oh. until like three months ago. And I could really? still only do like one real okay. one. Okay. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a fun fact about dumbbells. Anytime that Hibiki squats, in the show, I I was doing squats in the booth. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> so all of that. I don't need it. That's, it's a hundred percent authentic then. Authentic. Oh, that's the best. Okay. Um, Pokemon animal characters. Frank D. Riley Vic. What? I do who not know. Who is doing those? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know who anybody in the Pokemon cast is. Yeah, uh, that that whole cast will be coming up for us. So we save Ooh. that question and come back. Yeah. We're we're working on that behind the scenes. Uh, da da da. Boom. Invisible Arthur. Uh, um, man, my favorite part of that was working with Jerry Jewell, uh, who, who directed oh, that show. Um, yes. I love. I really love working with Jerry. Yeah. Um, He's uh, so incredibly easy to work with and um, makes you feel, he makes you feel safe. Especially doing that particular OVA because that was yeah. kind of an unsavory character oh. that, I, uh, that I don't normally have fun doing really. Okay. Um, but he provided the way for that to be done in yeah, a way. Okay. Yeah. And he, yeah. Uh, the environment in his, um, in studio? his studio is, is uh, unbelievably chill. That's and, awesome. And very low pressure. Yeah. Um, yeah. We had an I, I Love Jerry Fest <laughs> last night or the night, I think it was two nights ago in our in our VIP. We literally had like a I Love Jerry Jewel Fest. That should be every night. Uh, he's pretty spectacular. Oh my gosh. That's hilarious. <laughs> Text me. Text me right now. <laughs> I need an address. <laughs> <laughs> I need oh, medicine. Uh, can you what is it uh can you postmates me <laughs> oh man that's so good have you um i have tried french toast crunch breakfast cereal it is actually I, pretty good to be honest with you i didn't like it as much did you really yeah um, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the i'll stick with the classic don't fix what ain't broke it got guess, really dark in here it did, but sometimes sometimes it's a matter of like um, how close you are to the camera. I know when I gonna, um, my skin gets very less. Pale. Oh yeah, well look if I come look how washed out yeah. I am if I come. I too can close change to my me. I can change my color temperature. Oh there you go. Oh that's fancy. <laughs> now it's just a horror movie. <laughs> 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 um, that, that's the one that I want. <laughs> okay, what is on your what has been on your rewatch list? What have you rewatched? What are you going to rewatch? I well, I have watched now all of Millionaire Detective in Japanese, oh, and man. now that it is coming out in English, I am going to watch all of the dub. Um, I really love the cast, and I wrote episode three. What I wrote the script for episode three, okay. and it's, uh, I was just saying to somebody yesterday that I am. Uh, so incredibly proud of the work that I did yeah. on that script. Um, Good. It's a great show. Everybody go watch Millionaire Detective. Okay. Um, 
Uh, I want to rewatch Inuyasha because I have not watched Inuyasha mm -hmm. since I was a kid. And uh, the the sequel series is, is about to drop. I think like tomorrow. Okay. So I'm um I'm almost to season six of Naruto. We have that cast is coming on, and so Ooh. I don't like to suck at my host <laughs> duties. So I watch like every episode of everything that I have. Um, man, I remember B Stars when we had Jonah and Griffin on. I stayed up till like four thirty in the morning watching all of B Stars because I just waited too long to get started, and then uh, I took a nap. <laughs> And then we started the event. Oh, so, man, the day of. Yeah, I like until 4.30 and then took a nap and then woke up and started hangouts and then was ready for the... But I was ready for the panel. I knew my B-stars. You were fresh. Oh, it was. It was. Sometimes there's like an in-between because I've, I've been on panels where they're like, oh, Evangelion, I remember. And they're like, Brad, that was 20 years ago. Why are you asking me that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it was... Two hours ago for me. That's yeah, why. it's like because it's yeah. fresh. It's fresh it's on the mind. Fresh, so fresh. Now, I want to talk about it. Yeah, yeah, that's hard. Now, I want you to want to talk about it. I I tried so hard this week to talk about all the philosophy behind uh, Kimono Friends. That was what really struck me is how how much is operating beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. That like I'm still hearing people talk about cute animal girls, but I'm like, but no, but it's like it's like about humanity humanity itself yeah. and like how we fit together and how like each animal does their thing, but like together we achieve more, which is super cheesy sounding, but it's very true. So yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was really, really impressed with Kimono friends in terms of um, I watched a lot of um, what's available to watch our essentially reactions and like ratings and like people talking about Kimono friends. And uh, I have a philosophy degree. It's part of my, like who I am as an, ed as an educated person is um, all the different schools of philosophy. And, and they start Kaban off not knowing she doesn't know she's a human and they don't know she's a human. Mm -hmm. And like, it's, it's like, it's the purest form of kind of examining humanity. And I don't know of any other content that starts. And a really nice, clear metaphor for finding yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, unambiguously, like this is what it's about. Yeah. This is what this thing, um, and just the, the teaching each other is really cool. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's tempting to look at somebody who isn't all that you are or all that you can be right. Cause arguably none of the animals can be what a human being can be. Like they yeah. don't have both thumbs. They don't have cognitive thinking in the same way, but they still teach Kaban about what Kaban can be. And yeah. that's a real, that's a real message. That's that's in kimono friends so. it's such a it's such a sweet little show and and it's the first it's the first thing that i recommend to um people who want to watch anime with their kids. really okay okay with, the, with, with their little ones yeah, yeah yeah i can see that i can see that um okay so we oh i just can't do any more moltres raids i'm not i'm not spending a remote <laughs> raid past you guys on a, on a legendary bird i've been playing since week two of launch i can't i don't need another legendary bird you do not i need to trade anyone who's got high enough friendship level with me i want to trade with you because i need to trash them they they get one shot on my pokedex and if you if you come out <laughs> on the other side without under 90 percent ivs i'm gonna send you to the professor and i'll let him do with you as you will once upon a time, I traded a whooper that I caught in New Zealand whoop, bay, to whoop, whoop, bay, Kyle whoop, Phillips. Whoop, bay, whoop. And like a week later, Kyle Phillips deleted his Pokemon Go app. And now the whooper from New Zealand is lost forever in the ether. And I I'm still I'm still mad. <laughs> so I I traded Kellen Goff. Ooh. His his favorite is um, uh, C dot, and I was that would be that's such a good Pokemon for Kellen. I allowed him to CP jack me, so meaning I gave him a C dot with a much higher CP than he gave me, and then of course, like the universe, as it rerolls, it became a three star, and so now I'm stuck with this three star Pokemon that I got from Kellen Goff that I can't bring myself to trade because it's my friend Kellen. And if I yeah. trade Kellen 
It's like literally trading Kellen. I can't. That's disrespectful. Yes. You keep him forever. I know. So now I, <laughs> I am going to spend 250,000 Stardust to make Kellen a good Pokemon. Good. Yeah. Um, the only other one I have is Kent Williams. Have you met Kent? Kabuki Kent? Kent and I have been working together for uh, like eight years. Eight or nine oh, years. <laughs> I love Kent. Um, Kent is one of my favorite human beings. Uh, we puppeteered together. Um, oh. I, I used to puppeteer with his company. Um, he's like my cool uncle. Uh, I would, when we started, when I started puppeteering with Kent, I didn't have a car. I didn't have a driver's license. And so uh, the days that we had like a really early uh, gig, like yeah. somewhere out on the other side of the Metroplex, I would go uh, sleep in his guest room and uh, he would, uh, and I, 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 I uh, house sat for him for a while, but he would always pull out his, uh, the, the good linens. He had Pokemon sheets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, Kent is the coolest dude. I love him so much. I, I, I ran into him in like either early March or late February, like mm -hmm. right before the pandemic. Yep. He was, uh, yep. and I, I ran into him uh, out, out in the studio parking lot and we oh. stood there and just, talked at each other for like an hour and a half um, i don't think i have i have tried to he is not active on social media at all his website has a a bunk email address that did not get to him <gasps> yeah i was pretty sad to we finally got to meet each other in person at um in like plano texas or something in march and then i have this keepsake um was that was that a blissey or a chancy i think it was a blissey that was a chancy is it a Chansey? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Blissey is has like the white wings by her mm -hmm. ears, um, and so I, I, I have this reminder because you know it's one of the Pokemon you think about putting in gyms because it's so tanky and like what am I gonna do battling with it? I might as well leave leave it somewhere. Um, and I, yeah, I would love to to see Kent uh, or to have him on. It'd be great. Um, yeah, Quentin Flynn and Cam Clark did. Uh, Quentin Flynn sounds really familiar. I would. I think Quentin Flynn is in Naruto. Um, a quick Google search of those names, and then what you're looking for is behind the voice actor will be super helpful. Um, or Anime it, News Network. Anime News Network cast lists are uh, very well kept. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Brittany gets on me for using behind the voice actor, but the little like graphical thing—it's just so easy to use. So that is nice. My so my parting shot for tonight is if you enjoy the French toast idea, but you want to eat on the healthier side, this is what a big nerd I am. You can tell what my diet is like, uh, Maddie. I I'm like, I told Rachel I was going to give her a, a hot, super hot husband with rock hard abs. That was what I promised her, and so. <laughs> I, um, I try to eat super healthy. So that's how I know that the cereal even exists. So there's, there, that's my parting shot. It's my, that's, if you want to feel good about yourself, but eat something that claims but to be still eat like a raccoon, <laughs> then get the Kashi version of cinnamon French toast, crispy cinnamon puffs with a touch of maple syrup. Plus you get to read about, um, uh, I can't remember his name. He's on the back of the cereal. You get to read about they are working with a bunch of farmers to transition from traditional farming to organic farming or from Ooh. commercial farming to organic farming. And so they actually feature a lot of their farmers on the back of the cereal boxes. Kashi does. And so um, I grew up reading, doing the puzzles on the back of cereal boxes. I don't know if your experience was the same way. So this is like the adult version of the game on the back is you get to learn about a farmer who's <laughs> trying to make the world a better place. Um, what? Uh, oh, that's funny. Bobby. Oh, where did that go? Thank you, Bobby. That was, that was awfully nice of you. And then, and then Maddie. <laughs> that, that look says everything we need to know. Uh, uh, look, okay. So one more before we go. Uh, what? VAs inspired you along your journey? Um, so I feel like I have an answer for this. Okay. And I'm afraid it's going to be disappointing. Why is that? Um, I did not pay a whole lot of attention. Um, like two I don't. Hmm, okay. So <laughs> you didn't watch anime until two years ago. 
I, <laughs> I did. I did. I grew up watching anime. Um, I grew up watching Toonami, and uh, I um, I was a I was a fan of you know certain certain people in the industry or like certain certain shows specifically or whatever. But it was never this thing where I was like this is a person that I want to like steal from and then become, you know, it's a Highlander style, you know, uh, become, become them. Um, I didn't, I didn't really lock into anybody in particular, um, because I didn't intend to be an anime actor or be in voiceover at all. This was not part of, this was not part of my plan. Yeah. Um, I, I tripped and fell on my face into anime and, um, I'm very grateful for that. Um, so growing up, um, I didn't like super like idolize mm -hmm. anybody in the in the industry that yeah. I'm like, I wanna I wanna grow up to be just like you. But I did um I did watch obviously a lot of Pokemon when I was a kid. Um and uh so Veronica Taylor is one of the voices of my childhood. Yay! Um and uh I I went back to watch some some old school Pokemon not too long ago, and it was nice. It was just nice to you know to hear yep. her Ash Ketchum voice and um, uh, Madeline Blostein, um, who played Meowth um, and has the best name. Her name's Madeline. Um, she uh, she she passed away, I think, before I I considered you know being an actor at all, mm. but. Um, uh, hearing her work um was really inspiring to me just as a human being um especially because uh, uh madeline blostein um was a, a trans woman um who voiced probably half of the characters that we all heard on you know saturday morning cartoons uh you know in people in my age range you know growing up um mm -hmm. Uh, but she, uh, she had such a cool cartoon range. Um, and like, I, I took a walk through her like IMDb page oh, recently. Yeah. Cause I was thinking, I was thinking about her for some reason. Very cool. Um, and I'm like, she, she really, she voiced half of the characters that, you know, I, I ever heard, uh, growing up and, um, yeah, I don't know. I wish um, I wish life had had happened in such a way where I had I had crossed been given the opportunity to meet her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, ugh, she's awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I um. Hmm. Does that cool. answer your question? I, I think know. so. I think it does. <laughs> I think it does. Uh, are there are there other people that if you could meet, you would? I just had this conversation with Rachel. Who's who are three people that you'd meet if you if you could meet um, in in the the voiceover world? No, just if or there's just, three just three three people, uh, obviously it'll kind of tip your hat to who's been influential in your life for you yeah. as a person, but who would who would you meet if you could choose? Um I have gotten to meet him, but I would really like to be able to like have a beer and a conversation mm -hmm. with Brian Cranston. Okay. Um, I met him very, very briefly. Um, once. Um, and who's your number two and number three? I'm cheating a little bit cause I just had this conversation with Rachel. So, Oh, Rachel, are you there? Well, Maddie thinks about this. Jeff yeah. would like to see what you look like in dreads. Can you make an appearance and show <laughs> show Jeff what you look like in in dreads? Ooh, not real. So there we go. Yeah. Uh, I That's like awesome. she does she does this thing where she'll like um, take like a piece of it and and do this. Um, it kind of oh kind of looks like that. That I like that where it's like it's not it's like long down here and then there's like this I don't know that looks but, cool I think it then. looks cool yeah um so um, yeah if you if you think of it, otherwise I can help you stall by revealing one of mine Kate Blanchett I think okay. and 
I don't know, Nicholas Kristoff, who's a journalist, he's a writer. Interesting, okay. Um, I saw Nick Kristoff speak at uh, SMU when I was in high school and wound up writing, um, I wound up writing an essay based on uh, articles that he had written like in the 80s. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would like to have, I would like to have some cool conversations with them. Okay. Yeah. I, when I, for some reason, when you type in his name, like wife and family come up, like it, it like it won't give you him first. It'll give you his wife and his family. That's interesting. Um, number one on my list is Justin Bieber. Um, <laughs> he has written so many things that have made me stop my life. Um, he uh, heaven is the most recent one. Have you, it just dropped like a week ago. I am a hundred percent. I am as unfamiliar with Justin Bieber as uh, I could possibly be. As you could possibly be. Okay. So then here we go. YouTube. Um, when I was younger, 10, 10 years ago, he wrote a song called pray in which uh, it said, uh, am I a sinner? If half my dinner is still there on my plate when kids are dying. And, right. Um, and so he's like reflecting on his life of plenty in that um, he has things that other people don't have. And is, does that make him inherently like, wh what is his level of responsibility because he has? And I, I thought, well, that is a heavy message for a kid to be seen about. I'm going to pay attention. Um, and then he's written uh, several things since then. The most recent of which is called Holy uh, featuring Chance the Rapper. I'll just pause it when it comes up. And this is uh, a video in which he is working in the oil field industry during this year and ends up losing his job. And then he gets into his old beat up truck to go home to his girlfriend who is black. And um, then we kind of see her in her day and she is, works at a nursing facility. And then um, she goes in to find one of her favorite patients has passed away. And, um, so she goes home from that hard day at work only to find that they've been evicted from their apartment. Um, and then he finally arrives from walking back from work because his truck broke down. So he had to walk all the way home. And when he gets there, she's outside and the landowner is screaming at her and literally just throwing her stuff down the, um, and so it's just unbelievable. Um, it's a really incredible message. Uh, and so he is somebody who has was thrust into the public eye and and made to be famous as a kid. Didn't have a choice. Mm -hmm. It was his manager, as his parents, and then had to deal with all the things that that came with. And then we lost him essentially. He just like disappeared, and then um, kind of popped back up, married, and then um, has has been trying trying to get back on track into making the world a better place. And so. Uh, I, I definitely want to meet JB and I would like to meet Diddy. Uh, he is a, a, a gentleman that him and master P at a time when everybody thought that rap was this certain thing. They're like, no, what you guys didn't notice is that I took my fame and rap and I built all these businesses and I built these brands and I built these labels and I built, and, and you guys missed the fact that I'm an entrepreneur. And I was just, I was just dropping music to, to distract you guys to get the, butt <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. There is so much that was going on below the surface for those gentlemen and that they built empires. And then out of it, they lifted Dr. Dre and they lifted um, Jay-Z came out of that era. And like all of these rappers began to catch the vision of what you could do with fame and that it wasn't about spending money. It was yeah. about, right. And so yeah. like, he redefined what it meant to be black and what it meant to be black in America, what it meant to be a black entrepreneur. And so I would definitely love to sit down with Diddy. And then I'd love to sit down with Cube because he was the, he was the original person that brought to my, brought to the public consciousness, the, uh, the uh, overarching abuse and use of force by police. And they wrote a song with NWA called F the police. And it was seen as a, disrespectful, anti-establishment, blah, blah, blah. But here we are 30 years later. And as it turns out, it has been a problem for the last 30 years. And I read an incredible article about how sadly 9-11 uh, put law enforcement on a pedestal mm -hmm. 
And, and somehow, despite the fact that at least half of the people responding in that crisis, in that moment, were actually paramedics, firemen, that s- somehow the police, because of things like Cops the TV Show, and right, that we, we elevated this one, and it's just a job. It's a job like, you know, it's, it's like the person who reads the water meter. They're a city employee with a gun. And we somehow created through television and drama and movie, like we just kept putting cops higher and higher and higher and higher. And then the police unions used that status to then negotiate contracts for them that made them invisible in the eyes of the law. And so police began to escape like wrongful conviction. So like all of that came from that we, it was brought to our attention with Ice Cube, with NWA, with that song. And then Colin Kaepernick tried to do it again in a peaceful way. And so now we're at 2020. So those are three people that to me have been the landscape of music and entrepreneurship and social consciousness. We're, we're where we're at because those three gentlemen have put in so much work, um, that I would like to sit down and, um, and, and yeah, and have a chat with those. So those, that's my list of, of three people. I'm, uh, I, I, t- I tend to, uh, there's not a whole lot of candy in my, like, I'm, uh, you know what I mean? Like I gave up candy <laughs> like 10 years ago. I gave it up in my, like, it's, it's, it's out of my, it's also out of my content. If that makes sense. I don't watch a yeah. movie, to, like be entertained movie to see if it can, about something and so i appreciate content like is that i mean it's you know if you're if you're having a good time but it doesn't sink in like that this is what young women are experiencing and this is like the con the conversations they have with themselves with body image and like me as a parent i'm like thank you thank you for this content i'm gonna go talk to my daughter now we're gonna talk about yeah the the image you have so like yeah, I, I consume anime because I'm a parent of kids and I need to know I need to know how to relate to my children and be an effective parent. So that was a real heavy way to end. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I, 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 hey, everybody, if you haven't made plans to vote, make plans please, to vote. Please. If you're um, in Texas, like me, the last day you can register to vote oh, please, is Monday. Yes. Okay. Monday, October 5th. Can you register registered. online? Do you need to go someplace? Yes, you can. Okay. If you are you... not registered, register. If you think you're registered, check again and keep checking. I have checked probably 35 times okay. in the last month. Keep because checking. voter um, suppression is a very real thing. Is a horrible thing. And a lot of, uh, yeah, uh, our, our governor here in Texas is uh, trying to... Uh, really suppress the load. Um, so uh, I don't want to. Okay. So I'm going to, that's uh, Maddie's parting shot. We're going to do, I appreciate it. this is, you are not the first guest who has said to go to vote.org and you can click on, am I registered to vote and put in your information there and check your registration. And it's, it takes two seconds. It takes yep. however fast you can type yes. that form out. It's very quick. It's very easy. Yeah. Thank Robbie. Uh, we got our ballots in the mail yesterday. Oh, good. Oh, so, yeah. Um, I I am in the camp that if I'm going to risk my life, this is it. This is the hill I'm going to take a stand on. I'm going to go in mother in person and cast my ballot. There's a lot of reasons not to go out. There's one reason for me. And to if go you do out. have to, stay six feet behind the person. Oh, heck person yeah! Don't you, go anywhere. Back and wear a mask. And uh, it's a little take care of yourselves. I I feel bad with the, we had a plumber come over. I felt, I felt a little bad. Like he like tried to shake my hand and I stepped back and I was like, this is not to be disrespectful. And I had a mask on. So I was a little like, okay, can you read the tea leaves? Yeah. (laughs) Just a little like, I know I'm white, but I'm still woke. So like, if you could just (laughs) step back, this is the first year I haven't been sick. It's the first year of my life. Because we're not going anywhere. You no, can't get it. A- I'm wearing a mask. I go to the post office every single day of my life to ship out orders. I have to go to the grocery store. I go to the gas. I'm wearing my mask. Masks like, are cool, y'all. Masks- I just got I got two more in the mail today. They're um uh there's a white cotton one and a green cotton one. They're all triple layered, which is uh probably good. 
Um, and I've got some embroidered, um, little embroidered flowers on them. So they're cute. They're adorable. Yeah. It's, yeah, you've unlocked an entire new accessory slot. Like, yes, my, it's what it's what's keeping us alive. Our Etsy store that sells masks is literally what's feeding my five children. So we make cool link that to oh, me link. and to everybody. Link. Okay, I'll link I can that. I can drop a link. Um, Maddie, thank you so much for your time. It's thank really you. a pleasure. Um, I needed <laughs> to have a have a good I day. Do too. And I definitely, it was, it was, um, it was great. It was really, really, really great. Um, so everyone, uh, if you wouldn't mind when you, when you leave, um, the chat, uh, head on over and something encouraging, um, sorry is like, a, it's a tough thing because like it's part of life. Death is part of life. So like, it's not, but if there's, if there's a favorite moment you have from Dawn, if there's a memory that you had, if there's something that Dawn was in that just really touched you, those would 100% be the messages to yes. take, yes, yes, take yes, the yes. time and to share with, um, to, to let her know that we are like, we understand she needs to be somewhere else right now. And no, nobody is going to fault her for that. Yeah. But, and that but, we are thinking of her. Exactly. And that we love her. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Go show her, go show her some love. Cool. Thank you guys so much. Everybody in chat, have a wonderful evening. There is one final day of Kimono Friends tomorrow. It'll be Amberly Connors and uh, Morgan Berry. I have the VIP panel. I I repurposed our, our VIP from today since Maddie and I took questions in this panel. And then I will post the, the panel to the, the public panel for tomorrow shortly. And then we'll email that all, all out to make sure nobody misses it. But Maddie, incredible. Uh, Maddie's store will remain open all weekend long. Uh, if you want to go grab a hangout with her, then we'll schedule it at a time that works for, for everybody. So everyone, enjoy your evening. Go catch a few Pokemon battle your friends, and then uh, tell Dawn uh, that you're thinking about her. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all for being here.